we welcome you, O God. We welcome you, O God. We welcome you, O God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Lord. You are welcome in this place, O oh God. You are welcome in this place, O oh God. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Soriata neri ala la maso le la ba. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Holy Spirit, move. Do something so magnificent in the lives of those who hear this word tonight. Restore their joy, their faith, their confidence. Give them eyes to be able to see what they couldn't see. Give them ears to hear what they couldn't hear. Allow your revelation to flow. Allow your wisdom to flow. Allow your healing to flow. Oh God, we give you praise for your presence. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. We give you glory tonight. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. We declare that every burden will be removed and every yoke will be destroyed. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your grace. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll give you praise, Lord. Bless us tonight is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Those of you who are online, we welcome you tonight as well. I don't want to waste any time. Let's hop right into this. Last week we talked about why speaking in tongues is so important. It is one of those subjects that... Um, you don't hear a lot about, and yet it is so powerful, and it makes such a big difference in our lives. We know uh, that tongues is a grace gift. We know that when you pray in tongues, it's a perfect prayer. We know that when you speak in tongues, you release wisdom. You build up your spirit, your soul, your body. It brings peace into your life. And we also talked to you last week about how we can only be used while you're in this physical body. So if you don't understand the subject of speaking in tongues and then uh, apply it in your life while you are alive, it won't do any good when you go to heaven. Hallelujah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really uh, press in on this tonight, and we're going to continue where we're left off, and, and I, want to, I want to start off, if you will, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 in the Message Bible. See, tongues brings us closer to God, 
and uh, it gives us access to the supernatural understanding. Tongues bring up, brings us closer to God, and it gives us access to supernatural understanding, all by praying in tongues. You know, I got up at 4.30 this morning, and the only thing I could think of, I mean, when I, once I'm up and I'm up, but I'm not going to just lay there, that's my opportunity to spend time praying in tongues. And um, I spend time praying in tongues. Somebody says, well, don't you know what, you want, what you're saying? I don't know what I'm saying, but I know it's good, so I spend time praying in tongues. I spend time praying in tongues because of all of the things we're learning that it does. And it's not one of those things I'm going to, 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 to not have in my life because some people don't believe it. And, and here it is in the Bible. What do we do with all of these scriptures about speaking in tongues? Do we tear them out of the Bible and then just kind of choose what we want? What do we do with all these scriptures? And yet, it caused me years ago to wonder, what am I missing out on if I don't spend time praying in tongues? There, there are doors that open when you spend time praying in tongues. There's a, there's a voice from heaven that you hear when you spend time praying in tongues. But tongues will bring us closer to God. How many want to be closer to God? Yeah. Tongues will bring you closer to God, and it gives us access to the super, to supernatural understanding. I began, when I started praying in tongues and speaking in tongues, I began to, to have access to supernatural understanding. I don't know if I'd ever understood certain things. But I would, I would sometimes be studying for a message and just couldn't get it and start praying in tongues and it, and, it, and it was simplified. I could see it, praise the Lord. Well, look at this in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. He says, go after a life of love as if your life depended on it because it does. Wow. I, that's a sermon, right? That's a series right there. Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it because it does. Give yourselves to the gifts God gives you. Most of all, try to proclaim his truth. If you praise him in the private language of tongues, God understands you, but no one else does. For you are sharing intimacies just between you and him. But when you proclaim his truth in everyday speech, you're letting others in on the truth so that they can grow and be strong and experience his presence with you. That's powerful. That is so, 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 so powerful. Praying in tongues opens the door to deeper intimacy with God. And I tell you right now that this Christian life is about a personal, intimate relationship with God. And praying in tongues does that. Praying in tongues opens the door to deeper intimacy with God. And in the midst of spiritual attacks designed to steal our peace, it's tongues that will produce peace within us and refresh us. You take, take the next time you're under pressure, take the next time you're under stress, take the next time that you're under, under attack, and go away somewhere and just pray in tongues. Don't talk, don't talk to God in the English about nothing. Well, Lord, you know how they not done that. No, no, just go in there and just get away and pray in tongues and watch the peace of God invade you. Let me tell you something. Satan is after your peace through the avenue of your mind. And praying in tongues and speaking in tongues, I, I can't tell you the number of times over these 40 years where I'm praying in tongues and the peace of God that was not there showed up because praying in tongues ushers the peace of God into your life. Amen. That's good. In Philippians 4, 7, uh, he says, the peace of God which passes all understanding begins flowing through our hearts and our minds. The peace of God, when you, when you start speaking and praying in tongues, it, it, it flows. I like, I like this translation. He says that it, it begins to flow through our hearts and our minds, the peace of God. Well, I thank God that it flows through my mind because my mind is where Satan's going to try to steal it. Those thoughts that he drops in your mind, that's where he's trying to steal your peace. And when you pray in tongues, the peace flows through your mind. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen to this. Uh, uh, 
for one who speaks in an unknown tongue. One, I'm going to read the uh, 1 Corinthians 14, too. We just read it in the message. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. One who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people but to God. That's interesting. People used to come in our church when we would spend time praying in tongues in corporate prayer on Saturdays, and they would always accuse us. In fact, in this very building, y'all out of order. Yeah, yeah, now, hold on, brother. We're not talking to you. We're talking to God. Now, if I was talking to you in tongues, I would need to follow up with an interpretation. But I'm not talking to you. Let, let me, I said I wasn't going to scream tonight. I'm talking to, I'm talking to God. <laughs> I'm talking to God, amen? He says, does not speak to people but to God, for no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truths, hidden things. Secret truth, hidden things. Now, if I was up in the pulpit on a Sunday morning and, 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 and I'm talking directly to you and I say, and I just left you there, that would be out of order because I'm talking to you, all right? But if I'm in church, and I'm talking to God. Now, when I talk to you, that's got to be interpreted before I go on, okay? So the gift of tongues is being able to prophesy in tongues and follow up with the interpretation of it so that you can be edified. You're not edified if I speak in tongues and don't give an interpretation of it. It's got to be followed up with. And so, you know, you just kind of have to be careful how some of that stuff goes on in church sometimes. Let, let me tell you something. Christian people, please listen to me. Don't do anything to bring attention to yourself and take it away from God. You know, you always want, we always want to give God the glory, all right? We don't want to give ourselves the glory. We want to give God the glory. Tongues unlocks the mysteries of God and makes obvious to us things that were previously hidden from our understanding. Have you ever had something that was hidden from your understanding or you, did, you just didn't understand how this thing works? Well, the Bible says speaking in tongues would take something that was hidden to, you, to your understanding and, and reveal it. Now, that by itself is enough reason to do that. I mean, all by itself, I, I shouldn't even ask you the question, have you had something hidden? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. God, God got a thousand ways to get you out of debt that, by tomorrow. Amen. You don't need but one. Amen. You don't need a thousand ways. You, you need one. And praying in tongues will unlock the mysteries. Praying in tongues, spending time in tongues. I have never come out of spending time with tongues without hearing or understanding or clarity or something that I didn't have before. Now, let's, let's just be honest. Sometimes you get up in the morning, you start praying in tongues, and, and you ain't feeling it. But you're not praying based on your feelings. Yeah. Somebody said, I, feel, I felt like God really heard me this morning. Well, you didn't have to because you were praying by faith according to the Word of God that when you prayed in the name of Jesus, He hears you. Amen. Amen. And so you don't, you're not moved by feeling. So you might get up in the morning, la, la, fa, la, 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 la. <laughs> don't stop. Keep going. Le be shada. Ha. Za da ba sha ba la. Ja da. He, he, she, 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 And you might know those up a little bit. Ha, la, la, ba, la, ba, la, ba, la, ba, la, ba, la. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be the practical thing with you. Keep going. Keep going. It's, it's a precious, awesome gift. If you, see, if, if you spend enough time praying in tongues, it will begin to affect even your physical body. You will sense the presence of God like never before. It's a private thing. It's a private thing. I'm not asking you to do this in front of somebody. I'm asking you to get a corner somewhere in your house where nobody, or go outside somewhere. I'm telling you, there, I remember this time where this guy, uh, he, 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 we, had, we had just come on television, and, and we were missing uh, uh, some millions. And I'm like, trying to find out where the millions was. He was trying to play around, talking like, he didn't know where the millions was. Well, we know we gave you the millions to pay the bills, and the bills didn't get paid. So, uh, you know, I wanted to smash his face. And, 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 and I couldn't do that because I'm the preacher. I can't smash his face. I, I wanted to still smash his face just because I was the preacher. I didn't care. I'm like, how you going to do that, man? 
And so I went across the, tr the, 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 the street over there. Before we had all of that, it was kind of like woods and an old house. And I went across the street and I started I start praying in tongues. And uh, I was just praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm like, Lord, you need to help me. I was praying in tongues, praying in tongues. I kept praying, kept praying. And then, and then the Lord spoke to me. He said, just because you have a right to do something doesn't mean it's right. Amen. And I wrote a book out of that, Rightness versus Righteousness You Choose. See, just because you right, you have a right to smash somebody's face in. <laughs> doesn't mean that, it, that, that it's the righteousness of God speaking. Well, the, 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 tongue, the tongues did that, and, I, and, and, and God spoke to me. I went, forgave the guy. I told him, I forgive you. I know what happened, and you do too, but I forgive you. God's going to take care of me. So I told guys, I said, go ahead and call all the stations back and tell them we'll pay our bills, we'll pay them back. And uh, all of a sudden they said, oh, uh, Pastor Doll, oh, don't worry about it. We, 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 we'll, we don't even worry about it. We got you. Uh, next guy, oh, well, we, we'll, we, just, we just cancel it. Don't worry about it. Another guy, oh, no, don't worry about it. We'll just, you know, go ahead and, and mark that free. Another guy, and we had, back, back then we came on, like, everywhere. ABC, CBS, I mean, it was everywhere. And everybody forgave us of the debt except the Christian station. I ain't going to tell you what Christian station it was. <laughs> but God took care of everything. I give credit to the time of spending time praying in tongues that gave me the wisdom, that showed me what to do, showed me the right thing to do, and it opened the opportunity for him to do something that I couldn't have done myself. Amen? Amen? So the world does not understand tongues. However, it gives us a tremendous advantage, and that day it did. I want to read something out of James 1 and 5, the... Uh, out of the Living Bible, James 1 and 5, he says, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly tell you. For he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. He will not resent it. He'll give it to you, praise God. So praying in tongues releases wisdom and directions for our life. That time I spent praying in tongues that day gave me wisdom and gave me directions for my life. And um, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a grace gift, and there are certain things you're never going to be able to make happen. But by spending time praying in tongues and spending time speaking in tongues, it, it's a game changer. It, it's a game changer in your life. Things start happening. The favor of God shows up. That's why I call this a grace gift. You start walking in things you don't even deserve. It's a grace gift for speaking in tongues, man. So when we want to ask God for something but do not have the right words, you ever been there before? I want to ask you for something, but I don't have the right words. Praying in tongues is praying the perfect prayer. I want to ask something, but I don't have the right words. Praying in tongues is praying the perfect prayer. Not knowing how to ask God is a weakness of the flesh, but the Holy Spirit helps us with this weakness. Now, I want to show you this in Romans 8, uh, 26 and 27 in the Amplified Bible. Romans 8, 20, 26, 27. So, I, there are two things that can happen that would be weaknesses. Number one, I may not know I need to pray about something because I'm unaware that that something is happening. And then number two, even if I am aware of it, I don't quite know the words to use to pray about that situation uh, correctly. And so the Holy Spirit's going to help me praying in tongues. Look what he says here. In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayers to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time. Intercede on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes before God on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. So he says, praying in tongues, you pray the perfect prayer according to God's will at the perfect time 
towards the situation and maybe a situation you don't know about. I never forget this woman was testifying uh, this time that she was in her house and her son was on, little kid, about third grade, was on his way home from school on the bus. And she started praying in tongues. And she was washing the dishes and just praying in tongues. And, and, and you guys who pray in tongues, you know how it is when sometimes when it gets really intense, you're kind of like, wow, that's the Holy Spirit praying. You, you don't even know what you're praying for, but you know something must be going on. You, you have a motivation to pray in tongues at that time. And you, you start, and she, she started praying and just really started praying aggressively. And all of us, uh, a certain, her, her son came home and uh, uh, somebody was with him and told her what almost happened and said the son got out the bus and you know how you go across and somebody wasn't paying attention to the sign and walked out there and he was about to get hit and he said like it felt like somebody pushed him back right before he stepped out in front of that car. And it all happened around the same time the Holy Ghost began to prompt her to pray. My God, began to prompt her to pray. So what am I saying? Don't ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may begin to prompt you to pray and you don't know why. That's why you pray in tongues because you don't know why he's prompting you and what to pray for. You don't even have a knowledge that the thing is going on. But the Holy Ghost who knows everything about every situation, if he comes and prompts you to pray, pray. I don't care what time it is. I don't care. There may be a time the Holy Spirit has awakened me at 1 o'clock in the morning sometimes, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't sleep. And he's like, no, I need you to pray. You heard me right. God needs us to pray. God needs us to pray. The Holy Ghost will help you to intercede, but he's got to find some people that are available, some people that are available for prayer. Thank you, Lord people that are available to pray. So think about it. When was the last time there was a prompting was going on on the inside of you and you, you, you don't go around asking questions, well, I feel like God wanted me to do something. No, 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 feel like it. Just pray. You don't know what you're praying about, but you know you're praying something good. You know the Holy Ghost is helping you. You know you are weak in the area of identifying what's going on, but he who knows all things lives on the inside of you and knows how to begin to prompt you to pray about things that you don't even know about. Oh, my God, somebody, this is this. This is what the Lord says in, in, in Isaiah 48, 17 in the NLT. Here's what he says. He says, uh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, he says, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you what is good for you and leads you along the paths you should follow. So he knows how to lead us along the path. That's that prompting I'm talking about. He knows how to lead you along the path. Now, you're not going to hear this in Sunday church. That's why this is Wednesday night crew. This is a game changer right here. This is what spiritual people do who know their God. We don't sit around and whine because the whole world don't know what's going on. When stuff happens in our lives, we start praying in the Holy Ghost. We double dog Dino dare anybody to tell us what we can't have and what God can't do. You better watch out. You better not let me go in my closet, move my shoes out the way, and start praying in tongues. You let that devil know, I'm not playing with you. Now, the world will laugh at you, and they will poke fun at what you do. But tell them to keep watching. Praying in the Spirit opens us up, opens up this option to us. Spending time with God allows him to lead us down the path we should follow. I, I got to do that. I don't know what other preachers do, but I got to spend time with God because I don't know what I'm, where I'm going and I don't know what I'm doing. I can't just go by, well, you've been doing it long enough. You think you know what you're doing now. So you got to understand with God, God doesn't do the same thing the same way all the time. God got 100,000 million ways of doing stuff, and I need to tap in on what he want me to do now. I don't want to marry methods. That's what a lot of Christians do. They marry methods. Just because this worked the last time, you expect for it to work this way this time. No, 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 no. I don't want to marry no, I don't want to marry no methods, praise God. I don't want to do that, praise God. I want to make sure, listen to this, shikere, bullshit, thank you, Lord. I don't want the message of the gospel to turn into a 
a memorial. And then that memorial turns into a monument. And then that monument turns into a mausoleum. No life. That's what happened with a lot of messages in the world. That's what happens to, to some of the messages that we've heard in the world. That, that, message, that message was hot. It was great. The civil rights message, that was hot and it was great. But all of a sudden, it, that, it became a memorial. And then we built a monument. And now it's a mausoleum. Ain't no life in it. I don't want the message of God's grace to, to turn into a, a mausoleum where there's no life. So I got to spend time with him. I need to know what to do now. I need to know where to go now. I need to know what to say now, Lord. Lead me, guide me, take me, show me. You're my unseen partner. I can't live this life without you. I don't want to live this life without you. I got to have you. I got to know you. See, that's the difference between playing religion and having a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know him, he knows you. You speak to him, he speaks to you. He said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 You see, we position ourselves to hear the voice behind uh, the Word of God. And we take advantage of the gift of praying in tongues. This gift is a, is, is a grace gift. It's a grace gift. That's awesome. Here's what Psalms 32 and 8 says in the Amplified. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you who are willing to learn. You know, we're living in a society today, people are not willing to learn anymore. People don't, people don't want to learn now. When folks come to church, they're not coming to church to learn now. They, they, they come to church so they can do church. I told you the other week, we know how to do church, but we don't know how to do life. In order to learn how to do life, you got to learn something. You got to be willing to learn something. I've never seen a generation, I've never seen a, a group that, just, just not interested in learning nothing. I don't want to learn nothing. I, gather, I guarantee you I'll probably gather a bigger crowd if I quit trying to teach you something and just start hollering. Just start moaning and groaning. Now, 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 Jesus. Nobody won't learn that. And he says, I'm limited if you don't want nothing. Because I'm not going to give where it's not wanted. Are y'all listening to me? He says, those who are willing to learn with my eye upon you. So this promise is contingent on our willingness to learn from God. We live in a generation of people who are no longer willing to learn. Are you willing to learn from God? I will always be a student of God's grace. I don't care how much I think I know. God is infinite. There's, all, there's something else. There's something else he's going to show me. There's something else. I'm, ama I'm amazed he does that. There's something else he's going to show me. Yeah. You know, I thought, well, after so many years, I got enough sermons to do this. I can go back and pick up, well, like this one. This is a, this is a message I preached in, I don't know what year it was, but it ain't coming out the same. I get to reading it, and then on the back, I start writing stuff. That was part one of last week. And then on this one, that's changing up too. And I'm thinking like, why? Because when I get to looking at it, I'm asking the Lord, what about this? And, and, and I had a limited amount the last time I preached on tongue, but now I'm seeing some stuff I've never seen before. Are you listening to me? Religion has made people unwilling to learn. And these people put up a fence around their religious traditions. Remember Mark chapter 7 and verse 13, he says, making the Word of God, Mark 7, 13, making the Word of God a non-effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do you. Amen. This is real. This is one thing I can testify about. I had no idea how to start a church. I, only thing I knew is to pray and obey. That's all I knew. And I was real slow at doing things because I was like a barefooted priest. I wanted to be very careful at every step I took. But there was one thing I had confidence in. I had confidence that there was a God, and his word was true, 
And if I spend time praying in tongues, he going to make me smarter. He's going to make me smarter if I spend time praying in tongues. I'll never forget I spent time praying in tongues. I, had, uh, I was invited to the White House. Uh, I was on an advisory board. I won't tell you what president it was at the time because somebody might get mad at me if he, <laughs> if he ain't the right uh, whatever. And uh, we were on our way up to do a meeting, and I spent an enormous amount of time praying in tongues because I wanted to make sure wisdom came out of my mouth. And after spending that time praying in tongues, we were preparing for the meeting, and I know that was God. I heard him clear that day than I've ever heard him before. And he said, learn the vocabulary of silence. I said, what, what? The vocabulary, you know, you, when, you, when God speaks to you, you know, the vocabulary, what's, what's, the, what's the vocabulary of silence? Be quiet, don't say, no, don't say one word in this meeting. Well, I had talked to some folks that were going to be in that same meeting about some issues that I was going to be bringing up we were supposed to deal with. Uh, but I heard of God. He said, he said uh, learn the vocabulary of silence. And so I got up, and I, I wasn't saying nothing. And issues were coming on the board, and I thought I had the answer to it, but God said, learn the vocabulary of silence. I didn't say one word. I didn't say one word, didn't say one word. Then I said, Lord, anything else you want me to do? He says, oh, get, on up, get on up, go home. I said, that's the biggest waste of time I think I ever spent for in my life. <laughs> well, the next morning, <clears throat> a friend of mine who was on that same advisory board, he said, he called me and he said he started getting phone calls from some of the guys in the meeting. He said, uh, did we offend Pastor Dollar? What, what was wrong? Why didn't he say something? What was going on? And uh, if he wants this, we'll make that happen. And we knew he wanted this to happen. That's already going to happen here. And, and, and so he called me up, and I answered the phone, and I said, hello. And he's from Texas. He said, boy, you beat all I ever heard. <laughs> I said, what you talking about? He said, I'm telling you, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. In all my days, you beat everything I've ever seen. <laughs> I said, what happened? You came up to that meeting. You didn't say one word. They've been calling me all day, wondering what's going on, and you got everything you were going to ask for. That just beats all I ever... <laughs> and, and I said, oh, the vocabulary of silence. <laughs> but he knew that. I didn't. I thought I'd do it the way... You know, you're supposed to go in there and talk and sound intelligent. God wanted me to know it's not going to be by your might. Yeah. It's not going to be by your power. But I'm going to show you what I can do by my spirit. Yeah. And I believe God's calling some of us to that same place. He wants to show you it's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's by his spirit. And it's time for us to go and seek God and say, God, show me what to do. Show me what you want me to say. Show me how to do it. And then take some time to hear what he got to say. Because prayer is not a monologue with just one person talking. It's a dialogue. Praying in tongues is the most valuable gift that I possess. It assures me that whatever may come up in my life, I have a personal bat phone, if you will. <laughs> Glory be to God that he will answer every single time. And I'm all out of time. I guess we got to finish it next week, huh? <laughs> Finish it next week. Come on. Seriously, if you're, if you're not spending time on a day-to-day -day basis praying in tongues, start doing it. Don't let a day go by without praying in tongues. You might start off just five minutes praying in tongues, 10, 15, 30. I guarantee you when you get close to an hour, and, and not that you're looking at their count, counting the minutes on the clock, but when you start praying in tongues, you lose time. Yes. You lose time. You've been opening your eyes up like, Lord, I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm running late. You'll lose time. Your, your spirit, the Bible says it'll build up your spirit like an edifice. It'll build up your soul like an edifice. It'll build your body up. It'll build your immunity system up. 
It'll build physical things up. It's, it, it is a gift that will impact every division of a tripart man, spirit, soul, and body. But he can't come make you do it. You, you got you to gotta want, want it because you want it. You, it's not a heaven or hell issue. You're going to go to heaven, but when you get to heaven, you're going to find out you had access to something like tongues that could have helped you through a lot of stuff, but you wouldn't pay any attention to it. Rededicate yourself to that. Pick that back up. Dust off that place where you used to fall on your face. The place you used to go when somebody hurt your feelings. The place you used to go when you didn't know where the money was going to come from. The place you used to go when you lost your job and something needed to happen. The place you used to go where you felt betrayed. The place where you used to go where relationship was in trouble. And every time you, you, you spent time in that place, you got up knowing it's all right. It's all right. You dried the tears out your eyes. It's all right. I don't know, something happened. You went into a refrigerator that didn't have much, and all of a sudden you saw, you saw in the back an aluminum fall, a, a, a piece of ham. You, you didn't know you was back there. Let me go and get that ham. Let me go and get that ham. It got a little white on. Let me fry it up a little bit. It'll be all right. <laughs> oh, wait, man. Yeah, you, 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 you sit there, you, you saw the end part of that, that you thought you didn't have no more bread. Had to find a little end piece, you know the end piece? You know the end piece? Somebody said it got a little mold on it. You just cut that off a little bit. <laughs> Glory to God. Fold that thing up and, and, and lift it up before the Lord and bless it and say, won't he do it? <laughs> Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? <laughs> oh, lift your hands up. Let's just worship him. Oh, Bregero sola, reboco calara brisandera da bando, rebeke la brando roro sotole la grande le rieto pa, mandele lando roboco que landa, reboriando roroboso cocarianda da ba, reboco riatela la brazo, langrestuto ricando roroboso la banda, rebobobo brete, rebobobo se queriando, randerio tole crando, reboritando roro. Bose candere de bosoba, mere de loboso toria cara bose re abarabaraba, hada, hale le bose le labada, rebobo corre a bande lo lobrose le labasa, robo se que que te tora bace si corabasa. Say this out loud with me. I believe I receive what I just prayed in tongues. I release most holy faith for it to come to pass. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap in this place, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you're here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you're on that stream tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, world changes church, world changes nation, we're going to move in the spirit. We're not, we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we hear. We're not moved by the reports of the doctor. We're moved by the Word of God, and we're praying in the Holy Ghost. We're tapping into the supernatural. You spend all this time in the pandemic in the natural. It's time to tap into the supernatural. You've been hurt. You've been disappointed. You're wondering about life. It's time for this grace gift of tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know I'm going to get some letters. You can send them. I ain't reading them. <laughs> I'm going to pray in the Holy. You can't talk me out of that. There are certain things I can't talk you out of, but you ain't never going to be able to convince me that tongues passed away with the last apostle. You, you listen to somebody who didn't know what they were talking about. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. If you haven't been saved, I want to lead you in a little prayer that's going to get you saved. If you're here tonight at Bible study, if you're online, if you'll repeat this prayer after me, 
You can be saved in just a few minutes. Won't even take a minute. Say this out loud with me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I ask that you cleanse me. And so, Holy Spirit, thank you that tonight I have a Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And so, by faith, I declare that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. It's always been that simple. Amen. Now, uh, in just a moment, anybody that responded to that, I'm going to have you to come, come down and I pray with you. I really don't need you to come down. You, you got saved. Ain't nothing else I can do. You done got saved. Well, I'm moving all these traditions and the things out of the way. I asked myself, why we do that? <laughs> what, you want to come out here and get saved again? I ain't going to pray the prayer twice. You can get saved right there in your seat, just like those of you at home, you can get saved right there at home. We've had almost 80-something people every week to give their life to Jesus Christ. Isn't that wild? I mean, where does that happen at? That's a blessing of the Lord. Now, if you're at home, if you'll text the keyword, I'm saved, that's one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address. We'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today so you can get started uh, with your life in Christ. Amen. Hey, let's go ahead and finish our worship through with our giving. You ought to always be excited about giving. <laughs> I am going to have a private closed door meeting on giving with just the e-members and the members here at the church. No one else is going to be allowed to be in that meeting. It'll be so radical that is, is really going gonna to change your life and change your mind. But those of you who've sit, sat under the gospel of grace the last eight to ten years, you, you won't be surprised. In fact, you'll look at me like, well, we were just waiting on you to say it. We, I, I already been knowing that. And uh, this is going to be an amazing time. But giving is it's an, it's more of an attitude. It's the fact that I am giving to thank God for what he's already done rather than giving to try to get God to do something. I am giving because of appreciation and honor and love. I'm giving as a worship. I never forget when the Magi, Matthew 2, finally found Jesus. They bought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the Bible says when they saw him, they fell to their knees, but at the same time, they reached into the treasury to pull the gifts out, and they worshiped him with what was in the treasury. And that, that's what I picture. It's like I'm not paying my tithe. How am I paying God something? No, I am giving him a gift. You know, there's a difference between a gift and a payment. I'm giving him a gift. I'm going before God and say, I have decided in my heart that I want to honor you with this gift. The Bible says you got to decide what you're going to give God. And it also says he can't multiply what you consume. He can only multiply what you give. Think about that. He can't multiply what you consume. He can only multiply what you give. And so tonight, release a gift out of gratitude and thanksgiving. But it's not just you releasing a gift. God says, I'll multiply it. I'll multiply the gift that you give. And it's like, all right, God, I'm giving this as a gift, so I'm not really, you know, looking for you to do nothing for me. But God said, no, nah, I, 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 that's, that's just how it work. You ain't never going to beat my giving. You remember that old Baptist song, you can't be God's giving, but no matter how you try. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I guess I feel a little Baptist tonight, amen? <laughs> but, but seriously, it, it's you showing gratitude. What has done God? What has God done for you? You can probably name a lot of stuff he's already done. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I mean, I, I had cancer. I don't know more. I'm grateful. You understand? I'm grateful. I had meningitis. I don't know more. I'm grateful. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can start counting your blessings 
and you'll be so motivated to give to God where giving will never be a hesitation. Glory be to God. No more hesitating where your giving is concerned. Your giving should be as, even as your praise is. Give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. He said, bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. So if you're giving through the stream tonight, you can uh, give, you can text, if you want to text, you can text World Changers space and the amount to 74483. If you want to call, if you're somewhere on this earth and you're with us tonight, you 1-866-477-7683, someone will help you there. We still have people that mail it in. Praise God, if you feel comfortable. I was looking for a stamp the other day and people were looking at me like something was wrong with me. Uh, and if you want to go to give online, worldchanges.org or creflodollarministries.org, you can give online and you can also use your PayPal. Now, if you're here live, uh, if you need an offering envelope, you can give your offering envelope or you can take a picture of the QR code. It'll take you directly to the text and all you got to do is put your amount in and hit send. Uh, so the QR code is available for you. We're going to also in the future be putting the QR codes on the envelopes as well. Make it very easy and quick for you to do what needs to be done. So um, you can do that right now. Praise God. Are y'all enjoying this understanding series? Yeah. Uh, this understanding series. Is there a subject I hadn't covered that you might be interested in hearing about? I ain't never did this before. You need to take advantage of it. <laughs> we, we, we've covered a lot, haven't we? Yeah. I ain't covered everything. I got, I got a few more to, to, to cover. I got I to gotta talk about uh, the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Call it AIDS in the mouth. Yeah. Because you mess up your whole life if you don't know how to uh, put a watch over this one. And uh, Christian people need to know that's still very important. And, and what the Bible says about slander. And, oh, man, I, I didn't really know what slander was until it happened to me. And I'm like, I'm used to it now. I don't pay no attention to it. But when it first happened to me, I was like, just, I, I was like freaking out. Like, what? And the Bible, I follow people who are slanderers, and they're not here long. They are not here long at all. I had a guy years ago who got on the radio, not here in the city, but it was another place, hated me and just kept slandering me every day. He fell dead at the radio station. Wow. Now, I'm not saying that God's going around killing people. I don't know why. He, I don't know why he fell dead, but I tell you what, I bet his mouth has something to do with it because the Bible says if you want to enjoy life and see good days, the first thing he said is make, make sure your mouth is not speaking evil or speaking gal. So that, that's a pretty important thing that we need to talk about. I want our church to understand how to do that and make sure that happens. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and receive the offering here live. If you guys are at home, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, dismiss you. I love you. Thank God for, for you streaming in with us tonight. Enjoy yourself. Um, Atlanta Hawks playing about 8, 8.30. You might, you might want to pray in tongues. <laughs> yeah, enjoy yourself. We love you so much. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.